Hey, what's up, everybody? Jeremy here, and I'm very excited for the conversation we're going to have today. Shane Mich- Mischler is the Chief Operating Officer for SD Tech, and he oversees daily operations of the company, and they partner with owners to design and implement business strategies, plans, and processes. They are the go-to when it comes to information technology and scaling the right way. Shane, thanks for hanging out with me today, man. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Jeremy. So I, I want to find out first and foremost, because I, I think it's always interesting to kind of understand like where people's viewpoint comes from. I'd love to hear a little about you and, and your story and, and kind of how you, you arrived here at SD Tech. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a long story. Um, it, it, honestly, it's not that long. I, I've only had four. This is my fifth job. Mm. Um, but my journey's kind of taken me all over the place. I started uh, in in the service industry. I started as a dishwasher in a restaurant a long time ago, and I, I worked for five years there, worked my way up, um, and left as the uh, the general manager running mm-hmm. the restaurant. And then I transitioned from service industry into oil and gas. I was a roughneck on an oil rig for right under five years. Oh, that must and... have been a wild job, man. It was, it was a big transition and uh, it was terrible, to be quite honest. For five <laughs> years, I hated my life. Um, it was really good money. I was making six figures in my mid to late 20s and uh, the money was nice, but that, that was literally it. Mm. And so I eventually got laid off. And once I did, I took a big step back. And there was a lot that I learned during that time, primarily that the culture and values that were present in that industry uh, weren't for me. Like mm-hmm. it just didn't line up with who I was. Um, and I was very fortunate. I had just started um, dating my now wife. And uh, when I got laid off, I told her I wanted to make a transition and she was super supportive. And so I went from six figures to being unemployed for a year. And then I took a job making like nine bucks an hour. Uh, and I got into customer service for IT. And mm-hmm. over the next five years there, I I worked my way up into a lead and a supervisor position um, and I left as our senior operations manager and then went and worked for another company for, again, a five-year stint mm-hmm. and then uh, left there. And I was debating whether I wanted to continue in corporate America or open up my own business. And I met SD Tech CEO and founder, and um, it was by chance. Uh, he he was uh, one of my close friends was an employee of his, and I had taken this guy into my home and was trying to act as his life coach, trying to help him get things turned around. And so he had been telling me a lot about his job and the difficulties have, he was having. And so I was coaching him. And one day he got me to go into the office and I happened to meet Wes. And uh, Wes saw, saw his employee. His employee was primarily work from home. And he was like, uh, I need to talk to you. And <laughs> the employee was like, oh man, you know, I had my friend here. And he was like, yeah, I need to talk to you anyways. And so he started coaching him. And you could tell that Wes, the the owner, was a little bit nervous about coaching this employee in front of a person he had never met. Mm. And then I chimed in and I was like, hey, buddy, this is exactly what we've been talking about. Uh, This is the (laughs) advice I've been giving you. And then Wes was like, who who the hell are you? (laughs) Uh, So we we started talking and it went from talking about work to talking about shows we like. And uh, that was a little over three and a half years ago. And my life has been changed and it's... I really like the direction it's been going in. Shane, I'm I'm interested, um, you know, I guess a little bit in, I don't, I don't know how to put this because I, I observed like you, you said you started, you know, with washing dishes, but worked your way up into management. You know, you started in IT, worked your way up to in, into management. I'm, I'm curious, there's something in your viewpoint and how you operate that allows you to become more of a leader. I'm curious what you think that is. So I've spent a lot of time thinking about that too. Um, and it it goes back to to how I was raised. So I'm the oldest of eight kids, wow. um, and my youngest brother and sister are only 12 years younger than I am. So when I was 17, uh, they were like five, mm. and that's a really really big household. Um, and we were very underprivileged. My mother worked three uh, three jobs to keep food on the table, and so she was gone the majority of the time, which meant that the household looked to me for uh, guidance throughout a very chaotic upbringing. Sure. And I, I think all of that, my journey into leadership just started from there. It's just, it's, 
very natural. I want to help the people around me make the best of their situation. Um, I find it really easy to relate to people who come from different walks of life. And yeah, it's it just, I don't know. There, there's no real secret ingredient. It's, I just want to help the people around me be the best they can be. I think that's really, really important, right? Because I think like when you look at it, there's, I don't know how to describe this, but there's like two different types of people. There are those that are like, um, you know, they're self-determined, like, hey, I'm going to get this done, right? But there's other people that can look at it and they can say, okay, well, well, there's other groups and areas of my life. How can I make sure all of those groups do well while I do well? Do you get what I'm saying? I do, actually. So uh, Wes, our CEO and founder of SD Tech, is the, the first person. He's a very driven, very self-motivated individual um, to whereas I, I'm, I mean, I'm self-motivated and, and sure. driven too, but I, I like partnering. I really enjoy uh, bringing up the people around me and then all of us pushing towards a common goal. And I think that's what's led to a really good partnership. So uh, I'm curious for, for people listening, we have a lot of business owners, a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, they're kind of in different journeys of their business. And I think IT is one of those things that like, I talk about this like with PR, right? Like you don't know you need it until like, you're like, crap, I didn't, I didn't do it or handle those things. I guess when we look at it, like what things should be people be considering, I guess, when they're in the, the, the beginning of their business journey versus kind of a more, you know, that startup phase versus more of that growing business phase. I guess like what things should we be considering and looking at? Well, the answer I think is tough because what you should really be considering and looking at are the things that you don't know about. Mm. Uh, right. And, and I think that even as individuals that oftentimes what we have to focus on is, is just being aware of what we're not good at or what we're not, you know, what our strong suits aren't. And I truly believe that it's best for us to focus on our strengths um, in order to keep pushing through. I was actually listening to one of your guests from a couple of podcasts ago, talk about that. And I fully agree. Um, oh, that must've been Scott. Yes, it was Scott. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He was a very, very talented individual. Um, so, but explaining to a business owner that you you should be focused on the things that you're not good at or that you're not as aware of, it can. Uh, that's not. That's, it doesn't sound like great advice because I mean, where do you start? But um, even for a, a lot of our clients are relatively familiar with IT, and and I think that's great. It can really help you in that early startup phase, and you, you can identify what types of computers or or phones or what type of equipment you're going to need to get your business launched. But then once you are growing your business, you need to be focused on, on what you're, what you need to do to grow the business. So you need to be mm -hmm. focused on client acquisition and retention and, and building those relationships. And if you're splitting your duties between doing that and managing, I don't know, like a, a grounded wire issue for when you're trying to get your mic to work properly, uh, it can be time consuming. <laughs> you, you, you and I were talking about why I was late for this recording. I was trying to figure out where the buzzing in my headphones was coming from. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So if, if you're splitting your attention between the, the important aspects of your job and then the, the, the details of like the technology that it's required to run the job, it, it just ends up causing you to have split focus and it's very difficult for you to manage your business that way. And I'm not just talking about IT, but you know, um, with SD Tech, for example, yeah, uh, our CEO and founder is fantastic at client acquisition, at building relationships, um, at managing the business. Uh, and it took him 18 or so years to figure out that what he wasn't great at was building out a team, and he needed the right partner for that. So um, once you once you find that partner that assists you with uh, offloading some of that work off your plate, it allows you to really grow. And so whether that's finding the right partner from a business standpoint or finding the right partner to assist you with your IT needs, um, having somebody that can help you out with those things that aren't your forte goes a long way. I think that's a really, really important point because I, 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 my first couple years in business, and you know, we're, we're we're going back ten years now, but my first couple years in business, I like to say I'm just technical enough to get in my own way. So what I, you know, I can do a little HTML5, I can do a little CSS, I can, you know, I, I can handle some MX records and stuff like that if I need to, and I feel like sometimes that can actually slow you down, right? Because you're like, oh, well, I can kind of handle that thing. And I guess for people listening, when's the best time to offload that or how do you offload that, you know, the the, the right type of things? So I think the, the best time, like figuring out the best time to offload it is, is tricky because um, oftentimes, especially if you're an entrepreneur, you enjoy getting your feet wet. You enjoy learning about new things. Mm -hmm. And so it's very easy to go, oh, I'm going to spend five or 10 minutes working on this. And if I can't figure it out, then I'll get somebody. And then five or 10 minutes becomes 
you're watching a couple of YouTube videos, maybe you're looking at some TikTok videos, and then two hours later, you're like, oh man, I was supposed to have met with this client, and instead I was working on this issue. Um, so it's just about recognizing that uh, it's the, so one of the things I tell like our help desk technicians is if you don't have a clear uh, a clear path to resolution within a, a 10 to 15 minute window, it's best to seek help. Mm. Now, if you have a clear path and it's going to take you an hour or two hours, but you know exactly what needs to be done, then you should be able to make that decision. Do I have the time and resources available to set aside time for this or should I get help? But if it's going to take you any more time than that, then you should get help sooner. Um, and with with IT help, that's, I think, a lot of especially small businesses, startups, but even up into medium sized businesses, they don't they don't really think about how much time their employees end up spending taking care of these issues that bigger companies have an IT team who supports them. Mm -hmm. And then once you do realize it, then the majority of companies go, well, then I need to hire my own internal IT team. So, yeah. well, if I hire one person who's going to handle help desk, who's going to coach that person? I'm not qualified to coach that person. And who's going to, do I have to hire a manager? It, how do I get talent acquisition? If I'm not good at IT, how am I going to find the right person? And so a lot of people end up spinning their wheels and don't realize that there's companies like ours who offer this as a, as a service. So let me ask you this because it, funny enough, I, I love definitions. This is, this is something weird about me, Shane. Um, I've, I, I did a whole episode just defining the basic words around cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. Everybody <laughs> like, wow, it's so basic. I actually get it now. So I'm curious when we look at like IT, I think actually when you look at that, that's actually a misunderstood for a lot of people. And I guess when you look at it, what things would you say, you know, when you're defining IT, what things fall under that in a business? So I, I think that you're right. Defining that um, is very important. And the majority of people, when they define IT, it's, um, it's very cryptic, uh, mm -hmm. very specific and not, not applicable to my business. Mm -hmm. But when I define IT, so whenever I'm speaking with a potential client, I define IT as anything that is technology related. And the reason I like to be so vague about it is because I want to act as an IT consultant. And if, if I were your dedicated IT consultant and I worked in the office with you, Jeremy, if your cell phone was having issues, you would probably go talk to your IT consultant and say, hey, I'm having phone issues. And your IT consultant wouldn't look at you and go, Jeremy, that's not what you pay me for. I'm not going to answer that question for you. Y'all work in the office together. You're going to talk about things and you would go to your expert. Yeah. So I want for our clients to look at IT in a very vague way when it comes to what can I talk to Shane or what can I talk to SD Tech about? If it's technology related, let's talk about it. Let's, let's help you out because that's something that we are experts in. And I want to allow for, for my client base to focus on what they're good at. Um, and Jeremy, I, I can make a couple of assumptions. You, you look pretty comfortable behind a mic and with your headset on. I imagine that you've gotten pretty used to working the technology around this. Yeah. But I don't know if that's actually your background. So, so this my is wife, weird. My master's is in ancient history. Go figure. I, I took thir <laughs> 13 years of Latin. Um, and then I ended up like just really liking podcasting and I nerded out and I kind of learned way too much about this stuff. So I didn't start. Yeah, I wouldn't start being good at it. But I, I, I guess I could say I can set up a pretty good studio. <laughs> it looks like it. It definitely does. Uh, my wife is an IT professional. She works for a company called Digital Ocean, and she's been doing this for just as long as I have. And she is she's phenomenal with like all things Linux. I'm not great with Linux, and she's really, really great at this. Um, a couple of years ago, she wanted to get into streaming video games, and that's something that her and I have in common. And so she, I helped her put together a little studio, and um, her second stream happened while I was at work. And... 30 minutes into it, somebody in her chat's like, oh, hey, we can't hear you anymore. And she spent the next half hour trying to troubleshoot why the mic was having issues. And she ended up crying and calling me. And she was like, I don't want to do this anymore. And and it made me realize that, like, even people who are IT professionals, you know, quote, unquote, like, that definition is just so broad. And there's so many different things with it. And even to somebody who's in the field, it can be really frustrating I think it could be overwhelming to like to a business owner too, because like, um, and, and excuse my ignorance on this, but I think it can kind of be like going to a mechanic, right? You're like, well, does this thing on my car actually need to be fixed? Do I even do I even have that part on my car? Like, I think it could be really confusing, and and like you have to find somebody that can also put you at ease that like, hey, they're going to handle you the right way. So. 
um, that stigma with mechanics, you know, has been there since I was a kid, and I think it's ingrained. I, I would like to think that the industry is better now. I yeah. don't really know that to be true. But, well, we, we have uh, one guy that we've used forever, and we're like, I trust this guy. I know he's got it, so we've used him for like 15 years. So, like, I, we kinda, that's I guess awesome. you kind of stick with who you have, you know? You do. Um, and, and it's great. And I, I trust that whoever you have probably has their people, too, the people that they lean on. Yeah. But the industry is definitely – it has – that feeling to it that if you don't know what's going on, everything just sounds so foreign. So you really need somebody that you can trust. So let me ask you this then, you know, when we're looking at kind of the right IT systems, you know, like how can that make or break a business and you know, what things should we know about as our company grows? So I would say that for, for a small business, um, you may not think that IT is something that can make or break the business, but it, it has, it can have big impacts in small ways. So like for a small business owner who maybe has five or six employees, um, if you're going out and you're buying new computers so that your say receptionist or whoever's working your point of sale has a computer to work off of, you might only need a you know, seven hundred or eight hundred dollar computer. And if you're going into a place like, you know, Best Buy or Costco or wherever you happen to go, um, you're going to end up talking to a salesperson who's on a floor and chances are they're probably going to try and get you to, to buy something that is either outside of your means and overkill for what you're doing, or it may go in the opposite direction and they may try and get you to buy this computer that's on sale and, you know, is discounted off because it's got parts that are slightly outdated and you may find yourself with uh, employees who are, are, aren't able to work efficiently, or you may have just thrown money away that could have been spent elsewhere in your business. And so, those small decisions have a big impact long-term. And so I try not to, to focus on, you know, the catastrophes or the, anything that can go wrong, because those are the things that I think that we're very aware of, but our small endeavors, the small things that we do day in and day out can make or break small to medium sized businesses. And so that's, that's the type of stuff that I look at. Well, you know, what's interesting about that, Shane, is when you look at it, like, I think the number one thing most businesses should be handling isn't revenue, it's profitability. It's like, how profitable are we? And when you when you talk about that, right, that's an efficiency thing, right? Like, how efficient can we be to be more profitable? So I think at the same time, when you're looking at IT, it's like, how, how much more efficient does it make us? Is that the correct way to be looking at it? I, I would absolutely say so, because the, especially for, for a business owner who's never experienced um, IT going going bad and actually becoming a catastrophe. Uh, looking at the efficiency is a much more productive way of looking at things, and and having the right technologies supporting your business can can go a very very long way. Um, you know, having good computers, having even for you having a good studio set up can can really help you bring on uh, good good clients. Can help make everything easier. It makes your recruit recording and editing process easier. Uh, and I think that's that's a very good way of looking at it. It's funny you mentioned that. Um, something we added to the studio in the last couple of months, which is actually I don't. It, it's weird, but for me, it feels like a game changer. We finally added a wall monitor, which is behind my camera, so I'm actually looking at the camera when I'm talking to you, and it's not like I'm looking down and Shane's up there. It's actually changed the conversation because it's kind of like you're still with the guest. So that's that. You're you're correct. Like that's important. I, I guess I'm curious when you talk about some of those like major emergencies and some of those things that come up. You know, what are some of the toughest things that have come up and you've had to deal with for clients? Oh, uh, uh, there's, that's, there's a lot. So I'd say one of the toughest things isn't isn't the IT disasters that happen. Um, let, me, let me paint a story for you. So we sure. have a, a now client who is in the dental, dental field, and this client uh, wasn't ours at first. They were working with another company. And they were paying for backups on their server. Well, they actually got hit with um, ransomware. And so no. somebody came in, encrypted their full server, locked it all down, and uh, they were forced to you know, either pay the ransom or lose their data. And the company they were paying for the backups hadn't been running them. And oh, no. so they were like, yes. And the, the client ended up losing, I want to say it was about four months worth of data. They chose to lose the data versus paying the ransomware, which... Um, I understand. So they left their uh, IT company, their MSP, and they started working with us. And, and we assisted them through it. And ultimately, they lost a lot of man hours in rebuilding their database. Um, but they they still have chose not to go with what they need. 
And, you know, ultimately, if as a business owner, if you're presented with the risks and you're presented with costs and you're going to make the decision you you have to make. Uh, but that's that's really challenging from our side um, is dealing with with clients who, you know, deem that that type of risk is acceptable even after going through a disaster. Um, most recently, though, we did have a client who their server, um, their active directory, which is what allows for all of their people to stay interconnected, it it became corrupt and it crashed. And oh, no. one of our other clients, they, they were working with us and they had uh, the backups that they needed and we were able to get everything back up and running within a day's time. And it was very, very good. Now that's a slightly larger business and it is a bigger event, but that's, that's where having your IT in place can really save time, keep everything more efficient and keep things running nice and smooth. You know what's interesting too, because I think a lot of people don't consider like the sunk cost for sure losing that database or something like that, but also at the same time, like rebuilding a database time you're at, like you're, you're not able to operate and make money during that period of time, or you're making a lot less money. Like, so like at the same time, your profitability is crashing in in addition to have, you know, lost money on what you spent it on. You're very, it's very true, Jeremy. And one of the things I always think about is, is what are your clients going to say when, when you have to tell them that a lot of their information was lost? Mm -hmm. That, that makes a liability for you, but it's also embarrassing, right? Like, because it's like, well, I thought you guys were professional. Like, how do you let something like that happen? So it's, it's always a PR problem, man. You always got to be doing the right stuff so that you have that right public image handle. But I think that's really important. I guess when we're looking at kind of the world of IT and technology, what are you watching the most right now or what are you most excited about kind of as you know it's it's so wild because you think about like the first 50 to 100 years of the of the 1900s leading into now like things move so fast but we have new things coming out like rocket ride speed i'm curious what you're watching and what you're most excited about uh so it varies really heavily um I think in the last week what I've been most excited about is a is a combination of technology and science mm. and that is that um a group of scientists just reversed the aging process in mice. Wow. Uh Is it like a telomeres so thing or is that like something something different? I, that's that's outside of my realm. Okay, I'm 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 a health but, nerd so you always grab yeah. my attention with that. <laughs> yeah, so but it's it's really I, I think stuff like that's really interesting the way that technology supports it. So um, like wireless charging technology, I think everybody's a little bit more familiar with the little discs that would charge your cell phones now. Yeah. Like that technology, the development process started on it to allow for pacemakers to be charged wirelessly without having to have additional operations. So, wow. um, healthcare and technology go hand in hand in so many different ways, but I, you know, I, I like watching that type of stuff. I of course have to pay attention to everything going on with robotics and AI right now. And, um, you know whether you're you're terrified or amazed or a little bit of both, uh, and then Web three and and crypto has been something that's that's very, you know, very in our face for the last couple of years, at least in our field. Um, yeah, so th- those three things are getting my interest right now. And I'll, I'll be I'll I'll start, I'll start getting terrified when Chat GPT asks me where is uh, Kana. Then I'll then I'll be kind of worried, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> that that's fair. That's a good time to get worried. <laughs> Awesome. Well, dude, I really enjoyed chatting with you today. For people that watch this, if they want to connect with you, if they want to find out more about SD Tech, you know, how's the best way for them to do that? So there's there's a couple of ways. Um, one, you can learn more about SD Tech at sd-tech.net. Um, that's our website. We also put together a uh, thanks for listening gift. Um, it's a six very common tech traps that can start that can stop startups, um, and you can get that at smallbusinesstechtips.net. Um, yeah, those are two great ways to, to learn a little bit more about SD tech and if, get a little bit of information about what to look out for. And I really hope that you guys can learn from other people's experiences and avoid some of those pitfalls. Very cool. Well, Shane Mishler, thank you so much for hanging out with me today, man. Thank you very much, Jeremy.